Another one of my good customers was a guy named Pete Besson out of Eureka Springs, Arkansas. He had a laundry over there. Pete was not only a good customer year round, he was one of my best customers in the wintertime. He loved to fish wintertime. And he'd come at least one day every week through December, you know, November, December, and January. Well, this particular time, and sometimes he'd bring a friend with him or his wife, but most of the time he fished by himself. This particular time he's by himself. And it was around December the 15th, and we're out guiding out a 13 boat dock on Table Rock Lake. Now normally, whenever I fished with Pete, well he'd bring a can of biennia and pork and beans and stuff, and we'd build a little fire on the bank and heat it up and we'd, we'd have a shore lunch, you know. But this particular day, we, we left the boat dock and we went up above the 13 bridge. Fished up there for four or five miles, and caught quite a few bass. Two and three and four pound bass, whatever. Most of them we throw back, I guess maybe all of them. And we came in at noon, Went up to the bowling alley, ate lunch, Pete bought us lunch, and we shot two or three games of pool. Then we said, well, it's time to go back fishing again. So we go back down the dock, and we get in the boat, take off down the lake. Now, I guess we got down there several miles, around Cow Creek or whatever, and we'd fished about an hour, and we hadn't had a hit. At exactly the same time, both of us said the same thing. Said, you're hitting up above the bridge in that brackish water. That time of year, the, the turnover of the lake had migrated all the way down to about 13 bridge. It was kind of a brackish color, and from there down, it was just gin clear. Hmm. So, man, we cranked up that 50 horse mercury, you know, at blistering speed again. 30 miles an hour, and we head back up, and we go underneath the bridge and go over to the west side over there. There was a couple of big coals went back, and timbered coals. And, when you come out of each one of them coals, the timber was kind of square across the front there. And I knew that the water was about 20 foot deep at the edge of that timber. I'm throwing my twin spin, which is my favorite big bass bait. He was throwing a jig and eel. He's a big time jig and eel man. Anyway, we started fishing along that flat side on that point along the edge of that timber and just about, about fished out about the middle of it like that and hadn't had a hit. I turned around and I threw that twin spin as far as I could throw it out on that point, knowing it wasn't going to be over 30 foot deep on out there. Hit the bottom and picked it up and about, about a seven or eight pound bass just slammed into it. Now I'm working that bass trying to get in. Open water wasn't enough for it to hang on or nothing, you know, and I'm, I'm fighting that bass. And I said, Pete, throw that jig and eel right out there. And of course, he got in as quick as he could and he threw out there. Well, the time I even got mine before I even got my even bolt, he had one hooked on that jig and eel. To make a long story short, we, we took turns catching, we caught five bass a piece right there, 10 bass that weighed 67 pounds. Wow. Oh! Amazing. Yeah. Did, yeah. Who cooked that and night? Got a picture of it. Got a picture. With Pete, not me. Got a picture of Pete and that string of bass. He took them home and had a professional photographer take a picture of them.